For years, MEC and our partners have been asking the state to take steps to enforce the easement and protect the Great Lakes from an oil spill, but the state has continued to say that it's obtaining action we must wait until these reports are finished. First, the task force report, and now the advisory board report. While we've been waiting for these reports, much information has become known about the pipeline and made publicly available through independent research and from MEC's own reports. This information has led us to have serious concerns about the safety, even more serious concerns about the safety and structural integrity of the pipeline, and has led us to understand that there are feasible alternatives to keeping on by in these straits. These comments are focused on three main topics. First, our concerns about the safety and integrity and structural integrity of line by. Enbridge has stated multiple times that these 64-year-old pipelines are in as good a condition as the day they were installed, including at the last Pipeline Safety Advisory Board meeting. But we have seen with our own eyes in the underwater videos of the pipelines with portions covered with zebra mussels and other debris, and with the evidence of many reports that this is absolutely false. In fact, there is evidence that the pipelines on these straits have not been properly maintained, evidence of corrosion, and additional stress on the pipeline beyond what was allowed in the 1953 easement. Enders has repeatedly violated the easement requirement to have supports every 75 feet, and as was mentioned before, it was revealed recently in the Kingman report commissioned by Enders that there have been missing anchors that have left the pipeline unsupported, in some cases more than 200 feet. The state should act on this and the evidence of at least seven other recent violations. Many of these violations, like the missing anchors, raise concerns of additional stress on the pipeline that increases the risk of a failure as a result. We also know that I-5 has had 29 spills of more than 1 million gallons, and that most of these were detected not by remote sensors, but by local personnel or the public. Second, we know that alternatives exist to line 5 for oil and for propane. Technical flows that show that, that, that have been um, shared with the state have found that line 5 is not necessary to meet Michigan's or the Midwest energy needs or to get propane to the upper peninsula. Enbridge, in 2014, doubled the capacity of Line 6 feet to 500,000 barrels of oil a day. Doubling Line 6 feet and also reversing Line 9, which runs between Sarnia and Montreal, so now it runs from Sarnia to Montreal, were part of Enbridge's ongoing expansion of this network of pipelines carrying oil across the country. This Canadian oil company is transporting oil across the U.S., much of it going back into Canada, even to Montreal for export, with a shortcut through the heart of the Great Lakes. We are taking the risk with little benefit. This Enbridge pipeline system is now the primary means of bringing tar sands into the U.S. and Michigan is at the center of it. While Line 5 does not carry the thick dilbit that Line 6 b carried, and that still and sunk into the Kalamazoo River, some of the oil that Line 5 carries is partially refined synthetic crude derived from tar sands. So we are participating in one of the most destructive industries on Earth, where large swaths of forest land in Alberta, Canada have been destroyed for extraction, where petrol piles blow toxic ash on communities and refineries like marathons in Detroit. By allowing energy to continue to operate and expand its tar sands transport through our state, we are complicit in one of the dirtiest fossil fuel projects in the world that is having an adverse effect on attempts to combat climate change. Third, we have concern that the reports may be biased for Enbridge because of the company's influence over this process as an appointed member of the Pipeline Safety Advisory Board, which is meant to oversee this process, and because the company is paying for the studies and has arranged special privileges, such as being able to review the reports before the public. We also have concerns that the state has not provided us with a legal framework by which this decision will be made, or a time frame for that decision to be made, since this process is outside existing law. We're nervous that these reports will not give the people of Michigan what we need and deserve, and the action that to follow as well. This process up till now has not lent itself to that. Governor Snyder has been saying for over three years now that he is waiting for these reports before deciding what to do about the 64-year-old Line 5 oil pipeline. That wait is almost over. Attorney General Trudy now quite famously said that the pipeline stays are numbered nearly 700 days ago. As we take this step towards a decision on what to do about Line 5, I urge the Governor and Attorney General and their representatives here today to stand up for the people of Michigan and for the Great Lakes that you have a duty to protect. 
And I urge you to do what's right and to keep it in my mind.